Hi everyone, welcome back to the layout today. We're going to be working on rivers, which is something that um, we know we need to do, but figured we might as well show it. Uh, we'll kind of cut a few pieces out of it just to uh, save some time, but I want to show you an easy way that I do this and uh, works for everything besides rivers. You can do streets with it. In fact, most of the streets like these here that we were tearing out in another video are made the exact same way. Differences, um, when you do rivers, you don't have to be as precise. It can be uh, not an even surface. I mean, the bottom of no river is an even surface, so um, that works out kind of nice. Uh, versus roads, you want it to be very uniform and, and do some sanding. Um, so, let's get started. We're using Plaster of Paris. Woodland Scenics makes their own version and it's great stuff, you know, not knocking them at all, um, but just saying that this is five bucks versus uh, Woodland Scenics and their, their price, which is a little bit more, and you get the same effect. Uh, the easy way to do this is uh, five bucks at Walmart, find yourself a cheapo measuring cup that's a few bucks and some, some cheap spatulas or, or scrapers and uh, they also have these mixing buckets. Um, this is all pretty much found within the paint section uh, at, at your stores like Walmart. And uh, you just want to measure this out. Um, I've got some water over here I will grab as well. Um, but the basic version, once you get this open, I'll kind of do this so you guys can see a little bit better. It's two parts to uh, one part. So two parts plaster, one part uh, water and uh, let me get the mixing spoon out here and I can show you. Okay sorry about that I had to take this off the ring. Uh, so you want to mix up enough that um, you can pour this and work with it in about six to ten minutes. Um, this stuff hardens fast and uh, that's a good thing um, because it means you can kind of keep moving on your project uh, however, uh, you don't want to mix a bunch and then uh, you're either rushing yourself or you're uh, um, kind of just wasting something. Um, it's not exact, but it's close enough. We'll grab just a hint. Just a hint more since we're not exact. All right, so into the bucket. There we go. Gonna grab the water. The easy way that I do this is I just keep a water bottle um, nearby and then that way if you don't have a nearby water source you can just uh, use this to pour it because you're not going to need a whole lot. There we go. Alright, now that we have all of that together, you're just going to start stirring the mixture. What you want is you want a nice creamy consistency. Sometimes it might be too thick and if that's the case just add a hint more water and if it's too runny just add a hint more powder. So you're already starting to get a little more creamy there. And see how it's kind of splashing out a little bit. That's uh, what I was talking about with why you want some older stuff on. Okay, that's not too bad. That's uh, that's pretty good. It's a hint thick. We want it to pour a little bit better. So to be on the safe side, we're gonna take just a splash. Just like that. And go back to mixing. There we go. That's more of what you want. It's going to pour a little bit easier. It's still thick. So now what you're going to do, you're going to take, kind of tilt it out of sight a little bit. And you want to run it. It's going to come out kind of globby like this. That's okay. 
we're gonna kind of spread it and smooth it a little bit better. Start with that, move this out of the way. And you just wanna use this to spread it. Spread it up to your edges. You have, see this foam, if you remember us cutting that to make that into kind of a rock. We're gonna kind of spread it over that a little bit. This is just gonna help seal so that when you do your realistic water, um, it's not gonna go everywhere. Another thing that it's gonna do is it's also going to um, give you a nice base to paint. It'll hold color really nice. And if you notice, I'm gonna go kind of up on the edges a little bit, especially in this area, this has steeper edges to the, uh, to the rock face. So it'll kind of help just kind of fit all that together. There you go. Now we also have, take some that I was scraping here. I have a couple cracks back here that you can't see very well. So I'm just gonna kind of fill this in a little bit better. There. Just like that. And I'm gonna keep going. However, one thing is you can either make or buy these. These are basically plaster rocks. They'll look nice along some of the steeper edges in here. And while your plaster is wet, that's a good time to really just use the plaster to put them in. So I will um, keep working on this for a little bit. Uh, obviously I'm going to need more plaster than I mixed to uh, get more in here. You can see how much just that little plaster that I mixed up filled, which isn't a whole lot. And uh, we'll be back for some of the next steps. Next steps include uh, different uh, painting and other techniques. And we will be back in just a little bit. Okay, guys, we're back. So that's what it looks like. It's not pretty, but like I said, that's okay. What, what actual river is. Um, you can actually see in just the, uh, probably only took about 15 minutes for me to pour the rest of it. This is actually dry to the touch now. Um, there's a few places if you touch, you get, they feel kind of, uh, you know, plastery. You can still see that. Um, but that's a good thing. Um, that means really if you want to do this all in a night, you can, um, aside from the realistic water. But uh, next step is to paint. Um, so to make that easier, because the other river that's on this layout is dry, we're actually going to move over to that section next uh, to paint that and show you some of the painting techniques and detail techniques that go along with it and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so here we are at the other river. If you noticed, I pulled out the two bridges because um, I'm gonna have to paint those areas too real quick, so no big deal on that. Uh, but uh, this is the area that I poured earlier. You can see it's dry now. Uh, it's, plaster's always interesting when it dries. It's very cold to the touch, which is interesting. But uh, basically, I'm just using your basic acrylic paints. Pick them up for you know 98 cents or whatever. Um, these are some of the colors, light mocha, you want some shades of blue in there, a little bit of green, and then you want some bright green and bright blue. We're basically, oh, and I forgot this one, sorry. We're going to also use some brown. We're basically going to create an optical illusion of having darker in the middle and spreading out to the outside from there. Um, what that's going to do for us is actually create uh, kind of that optical illusion of depth to the water. In addition to that, we're also going to, in a couple shallow places, put in some fine ballast, which is gonna look like uh, basically wet sand. Uh, so that, that'll be kind of nice too. But um, you wanna start, you can start really anywhere that you want, uh, but you can uh, do kind of lighter on the edges, fade it into the, the middle, you also want a water. You see kind of off screen here is a cup, like an old mug with water in it. And you see the paint brushes here as well. Another thing I forgot to mention, uh, you probably want a little black as well. I'm running low, so I have two bottles here because they're both kind of low. And you probably want something like this. Um, this is actually like a mixing palette for paint. Uh, I build models as well, so I'm just borrowing it from there. But really you can use um, a paper plate for all that matters. Uh, but it'll just help you have some place where you can grab paint and put on your brush to paint the sides or wherever. Um, first thing is you always want to shake your paints. They have a tendency to separate 
And I believe this one's brand new, so I need to actually open it. Let me get this open. Okay. And go ahead and pour some out. It's a nice color of brown. It'll be a nice base for dirt and a bunch of places. Because we're painting a little bit wider, we're going to use the wider brush. You want to get it in there. And we'll worry about washes and stuff like that later. We're just going to do a section. I'm not going to have you guys sit here and watch me do this whole thing, or it'll be like a two plus hour long video, but I um, want to do just a section to get started with, just to give you guys the idea of what's going to happen and how. The other thing to remember is with paints, acrylics especially, um, when you're painting them like this brown, they have a tendency to dry lighter than what uh, you actually are putting in, and that's okay. Um, you know, this looks like a very dark brown in comparison, and uh, uh, we want that to be lighter anyway, so that it looks more like dirt. So we'll go, we'll go to about here. This ought to be a good, good spot. So I can show you the whole technique all the way across before we get uh, the video into like hour long videos and stuff like that, which I'm sure you guys would be just fascinated at. While I'm painting this, I also want to mention that I do have a uh, coffee, which is like Patreon, uh, except more flexible, better for people who use it. Um, you guys are welcome to subscribe if you feel like it. You certainly don't have to, um, but I do throw some extra videos up on there, some behind the scenes videos, um, stuff like that. Uh, you can get access to them by just a donation. You can subscribe for a dollar a month if, that, if that's what you so choose. Um, and I'll make sure that, that you guys get in and get to see some of the extra behind the scenes stuff. In addition to that, the money from that basically goes to fund this entire layout. We're almost there. I almost poured enough. I think I'm a hint, hint short there on the palette. It's okay. We'll, uh, we'll pour a little bit more. There we go. This is kind of getting a little off camera right here for you guys, so I'm not going to finish that part. All right, so we have that. This is where the water comes in handy. Um, you know, we'll just go ahead and kind of wipe off anything excess on the brush. Go ahead and swish your brush around in the water. Acrylics are water based, which was really nice. Um, so you take that, take your paper towel, you want to kind of dab it. We'll get to mixing paints in a little bit. Once we do that, Washing it isn't going to be as critical, but that's okay. Going to go to the sandish color now to do some sandbars. I'm also going to switch. We're going to take the smaller brush this time around because we really don't need much for a sandbar. And I'm actually going to tilt this down a little bit so you guys can see this spot here. I think we're going to turn that into a sand sandbar. So go ahead, get your paint in there. And then we'll make this kind of like a more distinct edge like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and take kind of a mix of both of these. You see I have both on the brush right there. And that's gonna kind of help blend and that's one of the things we want to do is kind of draw some of that brown in so that you have kind of a transition from dirt to sand just like that now before we get too carried away paint the edge a little bit there we go all right before we get too carried away we're going to take our fine ballast here while the paint is still wet, I have a little mini scooper. Uh, this came with uh, one of these ballasts like a long time ago. We're gonna just go ahead and just kind of sprinkle some in. Most of this, even if it doesn't stick to the paint, that's okay. Most of it will be held in place when we do the actual realistic water. 
but that's just going to add a little bit of extra level of detail to that there. Going to brush off some that hasn't been painted yet. Next, we're going for lighter. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera there. So, Shallow Shores right here is going to be light blue. That's a hint too light, so we're going to mix it. There's nothing wrong with mixing your own colors. This is a little better. I'll show this to you as well. Let me rinse my brush. Okay. You see I put both in there. This is literally all you need to do. Spin. It's going to give us nice blue right there. It doesn't have to be perfectly mixed and even color because um, that's actually going to give you a nice effect. So you're going to do this. Working edges, basically, sections at a time. And then we will go in and blend this when we're done. Doesn't have to be perfect. Mix. Grab that a little bit more. There we go. Just like that. Another thing that you can do if you want some algae in there, you can. The next step, we're gonna go a little bit darker. So we got, we got a blue here that's a little deeper. You can see that. And this time, is, this is where we get into not really cleaning off the brush because we want these nice, even mixed cover, colors that are gonna look great and blend. See how that looks there? Just kind of blending it in together. And it, the good news and good thing, I should say, about acrylic paint is if you don't like it, that's okay. It's water-based, you can just, I got sloppy there. You can just basically go over it again. Grab this. We're gonna have the fascia up here so it doesn't really matter a whole lot. See how we're kind of dabbing it and blending at the edges right here? That's what we want. You're gonna have a little bit more blend to it. It's not gonna be such a harsh, sharp line. Sometimes it's okay to have harsh, sharp line. You're going straight off a cliff or anything like that. It's, it's something that you probably want to have a little bit of. Um, you know, like I could have blended the, the sand a little bit. Um, in fact, since I have some, let's, let's do it. Let's blend the sand in. Blend in this, and if you notice, I'm using the narrow edge of the brush here. See, like this, helps give it that depth and that illusion that the sand's running off into the water. If you notice, middle, right there, is still unpainted. And if you ask why, it's because we're gonna take, let me slide this over so you can see it. Take some of the same blue that we just used, and some of the black, I think there's some left in this bottle, Too much. That's okay. Add a little more. This type of paint is also very thick, which you can see. You can thin any of these with water if you ever need. I'm gonna kind of want to mix that together. You'll notice it's a very black. Okay, we're gonna add more. Oh, come on, there we go. Black is one of the strong colors, black and red. If you're ever painting, black and red are your two strongs that will overpower your other colors, so you have to be careful of that. There. So, we're gonna go in like this, oops. Glob the dried paint there. Going through the middle and pull that out. 
can kind of wipe some of this off. So we're gonna go back to just the regular blue. And probably some of the light blue. Just like that. Another thing you can do is on the open palette sections, you can kind of pre-mix there. That way you're not using up sections that you don't want. Pull this through a little bit. Another thing to think about as you're painting is what's the direction of flow you want to think about your river so you want to curve it you know um, sometimes if you're going to do rapids or anything like that it's another thing you'll want to do come back over just like that not too bad um, i mentioned mixing in a little bit of algae it's always kind of neat. It gives it some neat uh, depth in areas. You really don't need a lot. This is a very green, uh, it's called parakeet. I don't know if you guys are looking for the paint colors. It's really up to you. You don't need a lot, but you just take and kind of dab some in in a few spots like that. Wipe your brush off a little bit. And then same thing, just kind of, kind of blend. Pull it in a little bit with some of the the lighter colors. There. And you have this very subtle hint right here in the back there of some probably plant life, algae, things like that. Um, so another thing to do is kind of where the bridges are. I'm gonna probably paint that more of a gray. I think I have a gray, I do. Um, probably to show that it's been like um, cut out, maybe more cemented in things like that right there. Um, I'm gonna paint this and I will show you what it's like when we're done. Okay guys, this is mostly painted. I'm happy with how it looks. Probably needs some touch-ups in a couple places. I'll get to that in a second, but looks like a decent river. One thing I forgot to show you that I want to show you is washes. Um, so I'm using pewter gray here and this little uh, mixing basin, I don't know what you call it. It's, a, it's something else for painting. It has some water in it. And what you do is you just take a little bit, because this is water-based, and move this over so you guys can see it. And you're gonna stir so it's very runny. And then determine if you need more. Probably need a little bit more. Let me add some here for you. This is making what's called a wash. Wash is gonna go down through some panels on panel lines if you're ever painting like structures and you need something to do a whitewash on the brick um, you know things like that mix this over here sorry about that it's a little off camera the uh, reason is is because I dropped some we're gonna dab that quick Boom. but this is what it's like it's just a nice very very watery wash. You get some on your brush, and when and then when you dab, you can help kind of run that down the lines. And this will be good. See how this kind of just naturally runs. It's going to help liven up some of these areas on the rock face here, or dirt face, or bank, I guess whatever you feel like calling it going to make it look a little bit more like it came out of some rock which is good especially with the way that some of this is cut Bring a couple drops let it just kind of run down and you can kind of brush and see how it'll just kind of do this very gentle cover it's going to take your, what would be your normal dirt, give it kind of more like this rock face type of look, 
which is uh, kind of nice, um, especially, you know, as we have like these steeper areas over here to the side, it's going to make it look a little more like this was a, has some rock structure to it, a little harder, was dug out of this. And that was why we painted it brown first. And then you have kind of this nice brown coat mixture in there as well. So that's what that's going to look like. When we get back to where the bridge pillars are and up here, we're probably going to put on a little thicker, but I wanted to show you that, that technique quick so that you guys can use this as well. All right, guys, wanted to zoom in, give you a chance to look at that, see what you think. Um, I need to touch up some spots in the very back, so I will do that quick. Um, but, you know, having that wash on there kind of gives it a nicer look. Uh, now you need to let the acrylic paint dry for 24 hours before we start pouring water. This is what I grabbed. My apologies. Realistic resin water. You pour this in eight inch uh, thick. Um, there's the instructions if you guys want to pause that and read. Uh, but you pour this in eight inch thick layers. Um, so we're gonna pour a couple layers in there. Uh, you have to wait, um, I think, 24 hours in between them. Um, oh, dry overnight. So not 24 hours. Dry overnight, and then we're also going to uh, add in some boaters while we're at it. So uh, you guys will just see a second flash, but in reality, uh, this will be tomorrow night when we are uh, pouring the first pieces of water. So I will see you soon. Hi everyone, welcome back. It has been roughly 24 hours and uh, we're gonna pour the water. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Um, so we're gonna start off here with the realistic resin water. This stuff works pretty decent. It takes a while to dry overnight. Um, you pour it in really thin layers. One of the things that you're gonna see, let me pan the camera down a little bit, is I added some masking tape. This is just masking tape in front here. This is temporary just to prevent any water from running off the side. I'm gonna open this up and uh, we'll start pouring some water. All right, guys, here we go. It's worth noting that uh, this stuff does smell, so be sure to have some good ventilation or wear a respirator mask uh, when you're doing this. You're gonna start in the middle. You're just gonna pour in lines. Let it kind of naturally fill itself up a little bit. And it's okay if not everything is covered to start with. We will get to that point. You can see how that's kind of filling in in a few areas. We'll worry about bubbles in a minute. And we will add in the boats towards the very end when we get close to doing the last handful of layers. Get over here because there's kind of the beach area. We'll let some of the area get on the side. Just like that. All right, like I said, you're gonna wanna let this dry overnight. Um, there's a few methods to um, get rid of bubbles you can pop them easily just by using something pulling them off to the side you can see that which that one isn't wanting to that's okay there we go you can also use a lighter although I would be very careful with that option I've seen people actually like to lay it on fire doing that as well so I wouldn't recommend that I'm going to finish pouring this first layer and uh, we'll come back and show you what it looks like all right, guys, there we go. It's poured. You'll notice that there's some gaps kind of forming. Um, you'll see these little divots right here like these. Um, that's okay. That's fairly normal, um, especially with it being the first layer. This is as basically all of the resin starts to uh, level itself out in between the uh, uneven surfaces down there. Um, so that's pretty much it. We're going to let that sit overnight and uh, come back and pour another layer tomorrow um, and uh, we'll just kind of keep pouring layers and building it up as high as we feel like probably not too high honestly probably only two or three layers but um, that's kind of the plan anyway uh, hope you guys enjoyed this hope you guys learned some stuff about doing this uh, in a different spot on the layout we might do like some little rocky creeks or something have it be more muddy instead of you know clear water looking 
Um, but yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Start with the gritty side. You're gonna hold your rail with one hand and you're gonna start scraping like this. You can already see a little bit of an increase in the reflection there. In the